Soul Seeker Hour on Afro Vibes Radio. You are talking to the Bishop George Sanders. I'm here on behalf of Soul Seeker and my good friend and our founder and director, Baruta X Alexander. He is here in the studio with us. I'm your host for today, and we are going to talk about a very serious subject. We're talking about sex and religion. Never thought you could put the two together, but on today, we are going to do it with finesse and style. I have some very wonderful guests that are in here with me on tonight. I'm telling you, it is going to be a power pack show. Um, starting um, to my far left, I have a very uh, good friend. We've been friends a long time, a very avid scholar, and uh, and I'm really excited about him. I'm going to let, let him tell you about himself, but he brings us knowledge not only from the religious sector, but he also brings us knowledge um, from what we call the mental health community. And I'm talking about none other than uh, Pastor Chris Times. I also have another uh, power-packed uh, professional uh, scholar uh, that brings us a lot of uh, information from the mental health community and also is what I would call an expert in esoteric and spiritual matters. I'm All talking right. about the one and only Dr. Vion V. Uh, Meg Reynolds. Uh, just happy to have you here. Great. And, 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 and last but certainly not least, uh, I have my brother from another mother. I'm talking about back in the days of Texas Southern University, we used to paint the whole university red. Mm. He is an avid scholar of Islamic scripture, and he's going to definitely bring flavor uh, to this conversation. I'm talking about none other than my good friend, brother Demetrius Harvey. It's good to have you on the show. Okay, starting with you, uh, uh, Pastor Times, if you could tell us a little something about yourself, what you're doing now, uh, we would really love to, to, to hear about that, give you a minute to do that. Awesome. I'm glad to be here. Um, I am uh, Pastor Chris Times. I've been preaching uh, for 27 years. I started off um, preaching right in Third Ward, right in Houston, <laughs> Texas, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, and uh, matriculated for years. Um, I studied at various universities. Um, I worked in education for a while uh, with uh, with the bishop. Yeah. Uh, we. Um, I actually uh, worked up to getting a mental health degree after um, getting a biblical degree uh, right at College of Biblical Studies. And so now I'm um, kind of like in mental health. So I do, I see patients all the time uh, okay. and we work uh, real hard to try to treat a lot of mental health disorders. So that's what I'm doing now. Wow, Look, glad to have you on the show. Glad to be here. Dr. V, tell them who you are. Hello, I'm Dion, Dion McReynolds. Um, I have a PhD in community psychology taught for a while at Texas Southern University. I currently run a nonprofit called Tour de Hood, and at that location we have Third Ward Bikes, and we also have a, uh, another part of our organization called uh, uh, Third Ward Tours. Mm. So basically what we try to do is get people outdoors so that they can be healthy. Wow, I'm loving it. Brother Demetrius Harvey, tell us what it's all about. Well, uh, me and George and I uh, met in 89, met, met in 89 at Texas Southern. We had a biology class together, and we've been friends ever since. Um, while at Texas Southern at age 19, I really got into uh, studying our history, the history that's not taught in schools. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just grew and developed from there until I got into the military and I was a, a hospital corpsman in the United States Navy and uh, got a lot of training, combat medicine, EMS, patient care, and I currently work at the Veterans Administration Hospital where I feel I can best serve those who put the uniform on, put the boots on, and uh, stood beside me, and uh, father, I'm a father and a grandfather of two beautiful, 
little young ladies. <laughs> and it's amazing to see the transition of life from yourself to the new branches of the tree that that uh, are now developing. And so Wow. Let's get on. Let's get it on. On on that note, I wanna I wanna say thank you to all all my guests and everyone out there that has served in any form or any branch of the military. I wanna just take a moment out to say thank you for your service. With all these wars and rumors of wars, we thank you for your sacrifice and everything you've done uh, to keep us safe as citizens and as a country. We love you. On today, everybody, get ready. Put your seat belts on. Um, we're talking about sex and religion. And I love the question that was posed to us by our founder, Baruti Alexander. Oh my, he, he asked a question. He said, and, and yes, I am putting him on the spot. He said, do we have too high of morals as it pertains to sex? And I would say sex today. And, number, and, and the B part of that question, how can we compare life today to an ancient world which committed, uh, which permitted, not committed. <laughs> See, my mind is already going there. Which permitted concubines. So um, I'm going to just toss that up. Who wants to get us started with that? Uh, do we have too high morals as it pertains to sex today? And how would we compare that to ancient times? And I want to, and, 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 and we'll get into some deeper stuff, but I guess we'll deal with that first. Do, do we have too high morals as it pertains to sex today? Who wants to I would say it? no, definitely not. Uh, okay. You know, when we look at how sex is being abused, uh, particularly with the uh, um, scandals in the White House, the uh, scandals with the uh, uh, prince in England or whatever he is, yeah. uh, the guy that was supposed to hang himself in the jail. Yeah. Uh, when we look at those type of activities, we can see that sex has become more of a recreational thing rather than procreation. So wow. if that's our if that's our where our morals are, then they're definitely too too low. And I would like to to uh, um, emphasize that the brother was very uh, adamant about his young daughters and seeing his procreation go and develop. And generally, when we look at life, that's what sex is about. Is really most of it is procreation and the wow. uh, the connection wow. that it, procreation brings. Mm. Mm. Come on, who want to chime in on that to give us your view? Who wants to go next? I'm getting excited. Well, I like. Oh my bad. <laughs> Go ahead, D. Put your put put it put it up there so we can hear you real good. Okay. Well, um, when it comes to fornication, I mean, and it, give us a working definition of fornication, because it may be some listeners out there that don't really know what fornication actually is. <laughs> well, it's in, it's engaging in the behavior of marriage but not the commitment of marriage. Mm. Mm. In other words, you you don't have a ring on it. Mm. Don't have a ring on it. <laughs> you know, what, you, what is marriage? Yes. Well, is that, that a commitment to someone? So if, I, if, if me and my partner, we say, I'm going to stay with you for the rest of your life, and you're going to stay, you said you're going to stay with me for the rest of my life, or we're going to form this partnership, is that a man? Oh yeah, he put he, he's putting his head for it. Mm -hmm. Get yeah, ready for this big response, headed. right? Educate us, brother, brother Harvey. Well, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, well, in Islam, you um, have to declare marriage. Okay. If you want to engage in a commitment, life that we have, because we only have one chance to make a first impression at living this life, um, you have to declare. Mm. You got to declare. Okay. Now, I mean, I, that may not be um, standing in front of. Uh, 
A priest, a preacher. A priest, a preacher, you mom. But you have to declare. So long as I tell the brother, no, that's my old lady. Is that the declaration? No, that's not the declaration. You got to stand there and say, I will be, and you will be, we will be. So and it has to be in some type of institution, uh, the government. So I need to go to the courthouse, or do I need to just have a ceremony, jump over the broom, that's good, or what do I need to do to make this declaration other than to my partner? Well, in, in law, you got to go to the courthouse, but uh, hopefully <laughs> we, we, would, we would make it a, a sacred and a sacred commitment. So we would, we would stand in front of mm. some official uh, religious authority mm -hmm. or, you know, your, uh, whatever your way of life that you right. committed yourself to. So, yeah, you have to definitely make that declaration. Pertaining to your world belief. Because yeah. I'm sure if I was in Wicca or something, then the, I guess the, not being funny, the head witch or mm -hmm. something, or the head warlock, he would, he would have to speak his blessing over my marriage, right? Right. But, but when you're not married and you engage um, in sexual activity, more than likely, uh, but not condemning anybody, Right. doing so because we're not perfect, we're infallible, we make mistakes, and we hopefully learn from those mistakes. Uh, so mm. um, you gotta you gotta, you gotta feel do you. what you gotta you know, you gotta <laughs> make <laughs> Well listen, let me ask you this before we go to uh Pastor Chris. And that is uh I I, I got to let it out because it's been on my mind. I'm sure you saw in the news recently in Uganda, there was a young imam that married a, 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 a woman, at least he thought it was a woman, and they were married, and, 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 and it's, it's public documentation that he was complaining because for like, I believe it was like two whole weeks, this woman claimed she was on a menstrual cycle and she would not let the imam touch her, but an incident happened where the next door neighbor spotted the wife uh, leaving his house because she had stole a TV out of his house and, and, and called the police. They arrested her, and, uh, and, and when they searched at the police station, found out that she was really a man, mm. and the truth came out, and she said, hey, um, I... I married the imam because I heard he had money, had some stuff. I was trying to take it, and meanwhile, I was trying to steal everybody else in the neighborhood stuff, too. Now, that's cool. But the thing that got me, Brother Harvey, was that at the end of the melee, it was the, it was the Islamic officials, I guess, that were kind of over that imam that was over that mosque, that they actually suspended him and kicked him out, and, and, and pretty much they... they they put him out as, as leadership over that mosque. And I guess what I'm trying to say, because I know we're talking about sex and religion, um, did they, was that fair for them to do that? Uh, or, or, or do you think that it, that was a proper way to punish him for making the mistake that he did? Uh, <laughs> I'm just asking. That's kind of hard. <laughs> You making that commitment that you know you don't really know what you're getting into mm. until you kind of try it out, and that's why you have <laughs> tits you know, run. People, yeah, I mean people date you know first before right. they engage in sex, mm -hmm. so that they at least know that we can kind of get along. We have a a possibility of staying together because we you know we can associate with one another. Or otherwise, we just say, okay, you, and, you know, <laughs> and that's it. You know, I'm just having the sex thing. Right. That's, the, that's deep. Uh, there, Pastor there. Chris, Pastor <clears throat> Times, it's, it, what can you bring to the table before we really turn up the heat? There is a, a spiritual element to this that I believe is appropriate. Okay. When you look at um, 
uh, a man and woman joining, uh, and we say in Christianity, in holy matrimony, and how we proclaim our faith uh, and our commitment to each other, uh, there's a union between the man and the woman that's sacred or should be. Right. And so when you're just having sex willy nilly, then <laughs> uh, now you've taken that sacred part, that union part, that holy part out of it. So mm. now it's just straight up lust. Right. You know, and I think there's a big difference between let's just do the lust thing and just have this sacred uh, union. Uh, so I think there's a big difference between the two. Well, Pastor Times, while, while I'm still on you, I'm going to take it up to another level. Now, we're talking about sex and fornication, but now I want to ask, and I'll start with you, mm -hmm. as it pertains to Holy Scripture, when I talk about Holy Scripture, I'm talking about the Bible, I'm talking about the Quran, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Vedic Scriptures, mm -hmm. and, and and whatever else we, we, we got out there, the Law Scrolls, uh, uh, what, in your opinion, what does it tell us about as far as sex is restricted? What are the boundaries? It should be in um, the confines of a marriage. Um, okay. And those boundaries are sacred. Now, you know, uh, back in those biblical days, uh, that context looked different. They had concubines, and then they had... Um, uh, wives, you know, David, <coughs> uh, right? King David had, I don't know, 800 uh, concubines or something like that. I mean, a great, right. a great number. Solomon. Because I want to, I want to see how. I'm gonna ask him in a second. I want to see how that compares to the Holy Quran. Oh yeah. And, and and what was permissible there? But you're absolutely right. Keep going. Oh yeah. And then after that, we'll get Doctor V up in here too, because I, I know he itching. So yeah. Don't worry, I got you, Doctor V. I know you coming in. <laughs> Now, when you look at the biblical uh, scriptures, and I don't really know much about the Quran, but, but uh, biblically, in, in ancient literature, mm -hmm. um, the marriage uh, definition, I think, looks different. You know, David had his, his wives, and Solomon had his wives or concubines. Um, I think in that context, it was acceptable during that day. Mm -hmm. However, over time, somehow, now, question, was it acceptable for the people or was it acceptable by God? That's different. <laughs> I think that the, the, for the people. Okay. So culturally acceptable. And the, the Bible talks about it. Okay. But I think God created the sex and the marriage to be between one man and one woman. Okay. If you look at the most strict interpretation of it, I believe. Okay. Brother Harvey, uh, uh, before Dr. V roll up in here, I want, I want the view of the Holy Quran. We want to hear it on Afro Vibes, on yeah. the Source of Gawa. Okay. Uh, well, in the Quran, <laughs> Even if it hurt us, give it to us. <laughs> in the Quran, uh, in uh, Surah 4, mm -hmm. it defines the... It, it's called the woman, but it also defines how we handle women in almost every aspect of life. Um, mm. Because what we usually say is that men are nation builders mm. and women mm. are nation sustainers. Mm. Okay. Men build a nation. And you get married, you, you, you see this woman, you want this woman to be your wife. Mm. So therefore, you declare it, and um, how much I say this? In order to engage in having sex, you um, in order to engage in having sex, you got to be married. You can't right. play around with that. Yeah, now. Yeah. Um, when you are married, the Quran says one woman is best for you. Okay. But you can marry as long as you're doing your duties, because being a Muslim means that you are sacrificing your life to Allah, the Most Supreme. Mm. Mm. And we do this by praying five times a day. And um, in the very early morning before the sun comes up, when the sun comes up, 
as it approaches midday, midday, as we're going into the evening, and then late at night. We have to clean ourselves before and after. And it defines when you have sex with your wife, you must be clean before and after and do not touch her when she's on her menstrual cycle because it, she's at her most unclean state. Right. Okay. This is powerful. Listen, y'all. I have to take a break. When I come back, I'm coming back with Dr. V. And and, and, and I'll put it like this, the, rap, the rabbit hole will deepen. Once again, this is the Soar Seeker <laughs> Hour on Afro Vibes Radio. We'll be right back. Awesome. Welcome back, welcome back. You're listening to the Source Seeker Hour here on Afro Vibes Radio. We are talking about sex and religion. I got Pastor Chris Times, Dr. V. McReynolds, and Brother Demetrius Harvey here in the studio with me. This is the Bishop George Sanders. Got uh, Baruti Alexander doing producing on today of the Source Seeker Hour. And, uh, and we've been talking about sex and religion, and boy, it has been getting deep. I'm surrounded by men, but ladies, I want you to know that we're taking an open approach to this. I wanted some uh, ladies to be on the show. I promise you when we do the part two to this, uh, there will be uh, even uh, a female perspective, but I think that these uh, these men that are here today are giving a very open and, uh, and, and very equal view of sex. I'm really loving what I'm hearing. Uh, when we last dropped off, we were talking to Brother Demetrius Harvey, and he was uh, giving us some very deep insights uh, as it pertains to uh, sex and religion in the world of Islam. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of our mental health professionals, Dr. V. McReynolds, and, and, and he's going to light it up for us real quick. Yeah, we we uh, were discussing that you should be married prior to engaging in sex, at least that's what the scripture says. And so I, I wonder who was Mary's husband when she had Jesus? <laughs> if that's the case, the way the story goes, who, how does that fit into being married and having children? Well, um, if y'all don't mind, I know I'm the host, but I, I would love to just chime in for like one minute and then I give it to you all. My understanding has always been this, and, I was, and I've always had a more uh, theological open view of, of sex. And I do know that the rules change according to dispensation. It's just like what my it's just like what my boy was saying. When we were in the Old Testament, it was okay for David to have more than one wife, and not only wives, but God also allowed him to have concubines. He was allowed by God. That's what I was getting at. Was it something that was approved by men, or was it approved by God? We knew it was approved by God because when David killed Uriah to get Bathsheba, one of the things that God brought to David's attention was, hey, I knew you loved women. I knew you loved to have sex. So that's why I allowed you to have wives and concubines. So why on earth did you have to go kill somebody that loved you and take their wife when I gave you everything you needed. So I do know as it pertains to this, uh, she was betrothed to Joseph, but the seed that she carried was, was, was what we call immaculate conception. It was a divine seed that was in her that came from God. But earthly, but earthly wise, Joseph would be the father because what we got to understand is that God doesn't abide by our rules or our morality. So that's my that's my answer to that. God God's ways, at least in in in, in the Christian the Christian God, uh, 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 Jehovah Yahweh, his uh, uh, his word is final, and what he can do, he can do because not only that, we can take this deeper and we can say that Jesus's great great grandmother was a prostitute. Which she was, so yes. he, yeah, so he had no problem with that. And what it was, I mean, who questions God? The God, God doesn't have to marry anybody. Well, we all question Him, Doc. <laughs> but you know, you, you know, I respect that. We all question God, but but I mean, if He want to impregnate somebody, who are we to say, God, you're not obeying the rules? And I say this and give it to you. Even in the case of Moses, by law, Moses was not supposed to marry an Ethiopian woman. 
Yeah, if y'all remember, he married Zipporah, and his brother and sister, they got on him about that. And when uh, and, and I believe her name was Miriam. But right. when Miriam uh, uh, put her mouth on Moses for marrying that black woman, uh, the Bible records that God struck Miriam with leprosy, and Miriam had to repent and apologize for that leprosy to get off her because even though Moses had broke, he, and it's true, mm -hmm. Miriam did nothing wrong. Moses had broke who uh, he break law by marrying the, uh, marrying out of his tribe. But God said, who are you to question whatever my prophet does? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so that tells me that God has a more open view of sex and religion than we do as people. So I don't know, Doc, Doc I don't know if that, that kind of shed a little light on it, but but, but, but tell us your perspective. Actually, I want to know what you think. Actually, not. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know, the, I received that. <laughs> that. What we're talking about, particularly religion, is something that's actually created by man. That we say that God did something, but we lack real, actually concrete proof that there is a God. The way we understand God is by faith. That that's the what we faith in things unseen. That's yeah. our. This sounds like another show, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> what we put our, what we put our uh, 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 confidence in that God exists. And so, if that is the case that God may not exist, then some of the things that His laws and things that we say are you know supposed to be correct are are laws that were actually developed by man. Okay. And so that's why it, the game is it's almost just like the European game here that it depends on who's on trial, how the laws are, are, are uh, applied. That okay. in the Old Testament, okay, we could do this, and now switch a Rooney here on the New Testament. Same group of people, but a different day, different right. laws. Husband same and one thing, wife. Yeah. Same thing with us, you know, we're at this level one day. And then the next day, we're at a different level. Different laws are applied to us. Okay, so, you know that's yeah. deep. Any anybody want to chime in on that or re respond to that? Well, um, yeah, you go first, Brother Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as I when we were speaking before, um, as long as a man is doing. As long as a man is doing what he's supposed to be doing, as a Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, praying five times a day, paying the poor rate, which is charity, um, he can have more than a wife. Okay, now, um, there's a surah, it's called, uh, there's a surah in the Quran that says, say he, Allah, is one. Mm -hmm. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and none are like him. Mm -hmm. What that means is that Allah created himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when he created himself, he has not the need necessarily for a physical family because when he created himself, he began the process of creating everything. Because everything was in him. I get what you're And saying. so, when he created it. everything, everything is his. We are his. We are his. So, um, beyond that, I mean, you got to be doing right. You can't, um, but it dispels the, um, because there'll never be another you, there'll never be another me, we're all unique, you know, but, and we're all of and from a lot. Mm, mm, I like mm, that. Mm. Past the time, did you, <coughs> and, and, and before you speak, maybe I need to do this so that we do uh, uh, do justice to Dr. V. He's our way elder statesman, and he was teaching when we was running around TSU being bad kids. <laughs> How would you, how would you look at it, and, and this is the fact because I know we're looking at it because we're all men of the cloth, mm -hmm. but how would we look at it from a view of, of morality if there, if there was no God? And then in a minute, uh, 
uh, Barut, Baruti uh, sent me some things that I'm going to share on, on, on here too. He, he sent me and his comments on, I want to share them on the radio. He's representing the public, the public, the public opinion. <laughs> and, and yeah, so, uh, so uh, if there was, if there was no God, you know, and I, and, and like I say, that's a debate for an, another day mm -hmm. because we can, we can be here for an hour talking about why we believe that God is real. Mm -hmm. But, but, but just playing the devil's advocate, if there was no God, how would you view our our moral standard and and what's and 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 how we view sex as a society today? That's a good question, Bishop. And I, I would say this: uh, you'd have to look internally. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your moral compass? Everyone has one, and so if I if I would say that if you know there is no God, right. then what would govern my actions? In, in, in society as related mm -hmm. to sex, marriage, or, you know, should there even be uh, that concept? I would say morally, um, I would look in, introspectively. And, 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 and I kind of like what you were saying about what the mm -hmm. surah was saying in the Quran mm -hmm. um, about, you know, is this morally... That was deep. Yeah, I think so. Is this morally right, you know? Um, what should I do? Should, can I take care of? And I think that's a good standard. Can I take care of this woman? Right. Or these oh, hundred, hundred. We women. could do that today. It would be some folks that didn't have a what They couldn't have a girlfriend. Couldn't have. A girlfriend. <laughs> well, but but I think they still living at their mama's house. That's a powerful standard. <laughs> can you take care of your responsibility as a, as a, as a man? And 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 I think that's a good standard to look at. Uh, absent of you know God, uh, that would be a great standard. So now, can I provide? Right. And and, and if so, how can I provide? In what I'm ways can I provide? Yeah. You know? I'm looking at Doctor V. He on fire. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad you came today. You you really put a perspective on this, sir. Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah. I see you want to you want to no. chime in with Pastor Ty. Yeah, Go right ahead. Not having you know with that sort of um, uh, moral guide. Uh, religion, you can still have values, and so the the basic value that's you know consistent, I think you know throughout you know all the animal population is do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and you don't need a supreme being to to guide you in that. If I don't want anybody to hurt me, therefore maybe I shouldn't want to hurt anyone else. Mm, very I don't true. want to subject. I don't want anyone to subjugate me, so I shouldn't subjugate my wife. Right. I want to be treated equal, then I should treat women equal. Wow. So, I mean that that's um I want I want y'all to listen to this and then I know I don't know how much time we got left, but I'm 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 a go there. Uh, I'm a go there today. Uh uh Baruti uh representing the public, this is the public opinion. Um, they say, uh, we believe the morals are based or derived from religious purposes. Sex is so overrated with what's right and what's wrong. And many people base their beliefs on what sex is or what it should look like based on the viewpoints of others. Sex is very natural as one that eats and digests food or eat. When, when hungry, it's a natural instinct that the body desires to be fulfilled. In the animal kingdom, sex is not something uh, based on right or wrong, just a desire and fulfillment. There is no judgment. We learn the world around us, acts of the universe. Therefore, we understand the order of those before us who these morals did not uh, b b belong to. Now, this is, this is my question. Since we are talking about sex sex and religion and and i'm not trying to be funny but to a deep extent atheism could be considered a religion because right. it's saying yes. because it's saying that, that, that there is no god if it yeah. is it's, you know I'm, I'm afraid to say it might be me right. you know so this is what i'm going to ask based on that is there a right or wrong way to have sex and you know what i'm getting getting at in oh. the animal kingdom do do we have animals that are that, that that do homosexual acts in the kingdom? Do we got animals that's bisexual? Do they like do do do, do they like boy cats and girl cats? 
or or do they like group cats? Do they do the group thing? And 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 I want to get into this because we need to know this about religion. Or, or is it some things we like to do that we should not do it? I'm not trying to be R. Kelly on this radio station. I don't know the restrictions of the laws, but but are there certain things we doing with our mouth, our teeth, or other body parts that we should not be doing? I I I, I I'm ready. I'm throwing it in the ring. I'm ready to fight now. I, I'm Who ready. wanna go first? <laughs> I'll, I'll go first, Bishop. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't scared. I'm gonna just say, I don't think there are any restrictions on it. Okay. And I know that's controversial, perhaps. It's your but, thing. But hey, you know, um, people, I think, trying to be religious, let's just throw that out there, mm -hmm. put restrictions on a lot of activities that we do. But I don't think God necessarily does that. I don't think he commands that. Anymore. Like somebody was telling me something about oral sex was a sin. Yeah, I heard that, but I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, I don't I believe <laughs> they're, 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 I don't think that I think that, that legalism or that legalistic viewpoint evolved <laughs> over time. But I don't believe that there are these super restrictions there. And, and, and if you look at it, you know, uh, there's um, a scene that took place in the uh, in the Bible, with Jesus with the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, is you know it was high noon, and that's the time that people, quote unquote, like prostitutes would go to the well because nobody else was going there. Okay. And and he he talked to her. He didn't, you know, talk about her sexual habits or anything like that. Okay. He knew this woman was probably a prostitute because she was at that particular time of day. But you know what? He instructed her. He, he, he basically loved her. He, 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 he offered her grace and that kind of thing. He never even brought up her, her, you know, her profession or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I think we as humans, as you know, maybe the religious uh, uh, culture or society puts more on this act of sex than say we should. Look at the animal kingdom like you guys were talking about. Animals don't walk around judging other animals for type of sexual behaviors that and I'm, I remember having a dog and he would do all kinds of stuff and I'm thinking man you know is that right so I think we judge things very harshly when it comes to that uh, whereas right. maybe God you know I'm not sure if he's indifferent about it I know Paul wrote some scriptures about it mm. but I take that aside because that's not the norm and just say I think we judge things pretty partial when it comes to that. Okay, let's, uh, let, let, um, while I still got a uh, little bit of time, let's take uh, real quick, uh, how do you, you feel about God, it? You know, for sexual behavior should be based around health. You know, one, uh, the bringing the offspring into the world, and two, if you engage in that activity, that it should debilitate either partner. Okay. So, you know, that, should be consenting adults. Well, what about you, Brother Harvey? Well, the purpose of prayer is for uprightness. Mm -hmm. But um, Allah will say, there is great benefit in anything that, like drugs, alcohol, gambling, there's great benefit in it. But the harm is much greater. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. Hey, listen, I, I've got to wrap this. I got to wrap this up. I hope they give me thirty seconds. Uh, if I could do this real quick, I want everybody. I'm giving everybody uh, a fit fifteen seconds uh, for the for the viewing public out there that may want to get in touch with you, ask more questions. All of you have businesses and things going on. I'd like for you to once again give your name and and tell us how. Someone, uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, how can they do that? And pass the times, I'll start off with you. Um, basically, you guys are welcome to, uh, to uh, call me, um, and um, I don't mind you calling. You can text me. Um, and um, Got an email? My email is uh, Chris, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-M-E-S-M-A at gmail.com. Right, and he and he is a healthcare professional. Amen. 
wonderful therapist. I might come to him myself. Thank you. And I got the, got the master right here, Dr. V. McReynolds. Tell us how we can get in contact with you. Uh, my uh, the best way to get in contact with me is Facebook, uh, Tour de Hood, and then send me a message through that tour, T O U R D E H O D on Facebook, and message me through there. Brother Harvey, give us the lowdown. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Demetrius C. Harvey. Demetrius C. Harvey. He said you can grab him on Facebook. And as for me, I'm Bishop George Sanders. I pastor a church here in Houston, Texas, Greater Mount Carmel, the Church of Restoration, located at 7414 Wheatley. If you would like to get in touch with me, my office number is 832-763-8342. I am available for spiritual counseling, spiritual guidance, and whatever else you may need, family counseling. I'm also a certified anger resolution therapist. So I am here for you once again. That's 832-763-8342. And you can also reach me on Facebook and Instagram under uh, George Sanders. Instagram, it will be uh, Bishop uh, George Sanders. And once again, we want to thank our guests. Um, I'm telling you, you have not heard the last from our guests. They will be back on here again. And we will be talking about other subjects that are going to definitely get your ear.